I'm excited about this one. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be fun. I think we got some some fun conversation here. Bull junk. Bull junk. Uh, and I want to kick this one off with uh, with Jaden Reed. Mr. Reed. A little liar, liar for you. If, if you don't know, if you don't then, know. I mean, uh, you should watch it because you're it's probably a, young. Might be one of the better, on most underrated Jim Carrey movie, I'd say for sure. Um, all right, so Jaden Reed's coming in here at seven six at the FFD ADP, um, and it's it's really like I think Jaden Reed is, is a good player. It's as a lot of the times when it's a sell for me, it's not. It's very rarely am I like that guy sucks. I don't think Jaden Reed sucks at all. And if there was a clearer path to Jaden Reed being able to, you know, rise like a phoenix and f- flap his beautiful, beautiful butterfly wings there, the butterfly phoenix, um, I would I would be all in on on staying pat with Jaden Reed. And 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 I'm not necessarily going out and selling every single share, but you know we, we haven't really seen Christian Watson be healthy over there. We saw Romeo Dubs be outstanding in the playoffs and has had good chemistry with Jordan Love. Everybody loves Wicks right now. I mean, Jesus, Wicks is every time I turn on the Twitter machine, it's Wicks, Wicks, Wicks. Um, you know, and, and you have two tight ends who are both really strong in Musgrave and Tucker, Tucker Craft. Craft. You have this ecosystem that's really strong for Jordan Love. Jaden Reed had an excellent season, really closed it out really strong as well. And I don't think he's just a manufactured touch guy. I think he can get you deep. He, you've really struck gold with Jaden Reed from from where you drafted him and from what your expectations, at least for a lot of people, were. I, I view it as, hey, let me mitigate a little bit of risk of we're not exactly sure what the pecking order and how it's going to go game by game um, for Jaden Reed. And I think if, if it was a little more clear, Jaden Reed would be up in the in the fourth round right now. But we're still a little unclear of exactly what that's going to be. And maybe Christian Watson never blossoms into the full potential, can't get that hammy right. It just never really comes out and 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 does what he needs to do. And maybe it's Jaden Reed's team from here on out and Romeo Dubs is is his Batman. But uh I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and remove a little bit of that. We 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 know we have uh, a Josh Jacobs that can catch passes. We know we have a Marshawn Lloyd who we just talked about in the last episode who can catch passes. Uh, so there's good pass catchers everywhere in this offense, right? Uh, so some of the pivots that I've seen here and, and some of the guys that are around him uh, in the ADP here at 7-6, you got Jaden Reed, you have guys like Deshaun Watson, you guys have like, you know, the Brian Thomases of the world, that whole, you know, in Superflex tight and premium, that whole 10, 11, 12 kind of draft picks and the lads and the JSN, well, not the JSNs, but the lads and the worthies uh, and the Brian Thomases in that regard. You got the Josh Jacobs a little bit above him. You have T Higgins's and, and Jordan Addison's. And, you know, I think I'm more comfortable with a lot of those guys than I am with, with Jaden Reed, um, at least moving forward. What I went in here, I went to the Dynasty Daddy trade database, which is really helpful. What's the word I'm looking for? Resource. A really helpful resource when you're finding uh, some good trades because there's, there's so many, such a big amount of leagues that they're pulling from and there it's very you can filter it really well with tight end premium and ppr and 12 teams and one quarterback and two quarterbacks so it's and that's when once you've imported your teams in, you don't right? this is not even this is just no. the trade database okay so there's they've got th- hundreds of thousands of of leagues that they're pulling from all these trades so these are all trades that have happened for jordan reed so i thought it was a good way to have a conversation about it hn and jordan reed or jaden reed rather for jonathan taylor what do you think is that a that you're willing to make i would rather jonathan taylor to be honest yeah, with you I, I agree i like i like going up to the shore thing i like hn i don't mind drafting you like him, him enough to just crush his name I correctly did. I here did. well i think we're out of the okay <laughs> you know we well, i sticked it out for a while there and you know now i'm gonna be on the sound bites so who <laughs> feels so good when he jokes <laughs> i'm not joking though i'm so serious but yeah, no, I, I like I like JT uh, in that in that uh, trade scenario. So here, here's here's a few more that I that I pulled up. Jaden Reed, a first, Rashin Ali or Jaden Waddle. That seems like an easy uh, Jalen Watt Jaden uh, Jalen Waddle there, right? Yeah, yeah. So in in any way, shape, or form uh, that I can move up into a tier of somebody that I'm a little more excited about, like a JT or a Jade uh, a Waddle, I think. 
that's that's what I'm trying to do with Jaden Reed. I'm not trying to be in that lateral move of things that I was talking about of guys that are around him who I may like those guys a little bit more, but maybe somebody who's like a George Pickens who's at six six. We got Jaden Reed at seven six. That would be something that I'd be looking to. What can I add to to Reed to get to uh, George Pickens there? I feel a little bit better about him uh, week in week out. Here was another one that I saw Reed. Ricky Pearsall and Marshawn Lloyd for Waddle and Kendra Miller. So that's a lot to comprehend. That's there. like a mid two and a late two, early three, and Jaden Reed essentially. If you just want to break it into draft picks, right? So I, I think that's Waddle and Kendra Miller for me. I, I would I would make that move. Now yeah. I like Ricky Pearsall and I like Lloyd. So you got rookie fever right now. You're charged up about that. That's a first round pick for the Niners. I love it. Plus Ricky's on the show. And, and Ricky is here. Um <laughs> But no, it's, I love it's Kendra Waddle. and I Waddle. love Waddle, and you're going up to an asset that I've seen be. Yo, uh, however, I could get Waddle top Let me twelve do that. Uh, player. Let me get Waddle secured the bag, as the kids say. Um, and then so a couple other options here. He got uh, paid. Can we just uh, read and bag. a twenty five third for Pittman? I, I think that's a bad trade. But the idea of taking Reed and, and a, a second and a third, and then going to get Pittman is something that I would really be into. I don't uh, hate that Pittman trade right there. I'm just th- read and, and a 25 third is light. I don't think you're getting that done. I don't think you're coming from a seventh round pick to a fourth round pick. So I think if you gotcha. I think I more real that like you didn't want to do that. I think but. more realistically, if you if you went read and a two and a three, you might be able to get a conversation started. I don't know that that would even necessarily get it done. I, what I, I guess what I'm driving at here is any guys that I can go and get that are a little bit more carved out in the role of being of. Uh, the one or or the two that's really really strong i think i'm i'm okay with making that pivot off of that and now some people will say i'd never pivot i never do that reed pearsall lloyd trade give me all those guys well i mean that's what makes fantasy work that's what makes trading work um because both sides have to be down to do something like that the, the other one i saw was reed for two two um and that was super flex tight end premium um so you know that's probably trey benson michael Penix, bo Nix, maybe ricky pearsall potentially Brian Thomas. So that, that seems right around there. I'd probably hang on to read right there. I'd, I'd probably want a little extra than that. So those are kind of some ideas of some pivots off of Jaden Reed that I found uh, and some ideas and, and of going up and, and solidifying a little bit more of a, uh, of a target hog. I guess you could, you could put it in that terms of, of what I'd want to try to get back from, from Jaden Reed's successful rookie season. I like it, man. I'm on board with it. And I like Jaden Reed. That's yeah. the thing. Um, I understand. But but here's the thing, Casey. Like, while I do like him, you got the sell high window is screaming wide open. Yeah. And I can't guarantee you six My months sales. from now that, that I can't guarantee six months from now that we can say the same thing. Right. Maybe maybe it's even higher. Yeah. Maybe. I don't we right. don't know. We That's we don't know. Run. But it's tough because they got four legit options in Green Bay. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, for sure. 100%. All right, who you got, Ricky Pearsall? Yeah, so I'm going <laughs> to uh, buy Ricky Pearsall. Dynasty wide receiver one. Just throwing that out there. Go make sure you anyway. follow at Austin Abbott. Two Bs, two Ts, two, two yeah. Fs. Appreciate it, fellas. Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, I'm going to be really specific with mine. I am selling Javante Williams, and I am looking to buy Najee Harris and change. Mm. So I pulled up, I pulled up Fantasy Pros ADP. They had Javante at running back 18. I thought that was, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm not I'm not up to par with Javante. Maybe I'm just significantly lower than consensus. Again, Javante, running back 18. You do Najee, fade th- consensus, don't you? I do. That is facts. Make sure Thank you go you. check out Austin's uh, <laughs> show and make sure you're following him. Fade consensus. You can, you can find that anywhere your podcasts are being downloaded. It's quite a plug. <laughs> I appreciate that, fellas. That was good, Jason. That was really good, man. Uh, Regardless, we have Javante running back 18. Najee is running back 24. And I don't know, man. Can you explain it to me like I'm three years old? Because I I just don't get it. Like we have Najee Harris, who has finished better than Javante every single season, right? Same draft class. 
Najee's put together an RB4 season, like RB4 overall, that is, right? We saw that elite upside. I think he caught 74 passes at almost 100 targets. Like he was, he was a monster, his rookie campaign. Najee's worst season, RB23. So he has been an RB2 or better every single season. And Najee's never missed a game, man. He's played in 53 consecutive games as a running back, right? That is unmatched durability. We do not see that in today's game anymore. That might uh, actually has, be his problem because he plays banged up and then doesn't perform well in those games. Yeah. Like The problem I mean, is man, nobody likes Najee Harris, regardless of how good he is. No one's going to like this take. Everyone hates yeah. Najee Harris. I don't understand. It's, it's okay, man. Three straight seasons of 1,000-plus yards. I mean – I'm not mad about it, right? And yeah, and now I, I here's where I get to play the villain, right? Here's where I get to play the bad guy. Casey, you know I don't like to badmouth anyone, and usually I'm not the bad guy on the pod. Not saying that you are, but it ain't uh, me. Are you <laughs> no, the bad but, guy? But, but but here we go, man. Javante Williams, it's time to it's time to tear into Javante, ruin his career. Uh, I just I just want to compare to Menage a little bit more, man. Uh, you know, we're talking about a player who's missed 15 games in his career compared to Najee's zero. Uh, I want to talk efficiency. Javante's yards per carry has dropped every single season, right? People people like to rag on Najee for that. Okay, well, nobody's saying anything negative about Javante regarding that. And mind you, Najee has been competing with a pretty good running back in Jalen Warren, whereas uh, Javante has been competing with who? Samaj P. Hey, Ryan and, hey. and, 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 and Jaleel McLaughlin. I'm not I'm, the ricochet I, I'm not even, romance. That was before your even, time, Austin. You're excused. We were big <laughs> Samaje guys. Hey, hey, but I'm not even did, look. Did I'm not even hit? tearing I mean, them up. Seven years is that too late? Yeah. Sorry. Hey, Austin. never, never wrong. Just early, right, mm-hmm. Jason? Um, yeah, but I'm not even early. tearing Samaje Piran apart or Jaleel apart. It's just, uh, you know. Jalen Warren is definitely more of a threat and definitely a better running back than those two options. And Najee's still cracking a thousand. He's still cracking the top 24. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, man. I just, I don't really understand the Javante love and, and the Najee hate. I'll just, I'll never get it, man. The fade has always gone too far for Najee, you know? Oh, on the last pod we did, I almost brought Najee up and I was like, you know what? I've been hammering the Steelers. I'm going to let Najee and Warren go as a backfield to buy because I fucking mm-hmm. love it. Uh, but no, man, I, I I think they're absolutely a buy. And I think Najee's going to come out here and slay. He slayed at the end of last season. He's got a, a, a system that is, is really going to be predicated on they're, they're going to look like the old school Steelers. They're going to pound the dog shit out of the football. Uh, oh yeah, Najee's going to be a lead dog. Warren's going to come in and 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 switch it up, and and they're both good players. We can live in worlds where run, both running backs are good and both offer different skill sets. Um, and I thought like at the end of last season, you saw Najee kind of doing a, even a little less, you know, nonsense and just kind of getting downhill and doing. And it seemed like you 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 really maybe might have saw a a, a change in in the style of how Najee plays getting you know what a lot of people want to see from Najee and then the pass catching has always been really good uh so if we could just get you know a couple extra check downs we're never going to see that Ben Roethlisberger like yeah. uh production right, right. Receiving game again, but we don't need to see it be crazy he's it's he's a 10th round running back right now I love Najee Harris all he does is go out there and put up stats and and, and be pretty productive uh people just don't like it because he's not sexy and flashy uh, but he's been fairly solid for your fantasy from your fantasy standpoint. And uh, yeah, I know that he was, you know, a, 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 a high pick and a high people hate him for because of that, because because he had control yeah. over that. All oh, he played really well in college and somebody overdrafted him in, in real life because uh, you don't agree with where running backs should go. So let's hate the guy, um, you know, and, he, and he's not he's not super fast and it's not super sexy, but he can do a lot of things. He can move the chains. Um, I think he's way better than people give him credit for. So I, I like to take uh, a lot. And you got Arthur Smith, obviously, now in town. Just something to think about. Mm. And it's, I, I don't know, man. I'll, I'll just, I'll never get the Najee hate. It almost makes me angry. Like, it genuinely gets me upset that yes. people just, make that people angry. just tear Najee apart. Like, all, all he does is produce. It's like, I don't know. I just think he becomes a better and better and better value each year because his ADP just continues to drop. So I, that's just where I'm at, man. Yep. No, I like it. I like it. My next player on my pivot Pivot. is must must sell. Got to sell him. Get rid of him. He stinks. That's why we're selling him. But that's not really the case at all. And that's not really the conversation that you should ever be having. We're just talking about where the ADP falls and some other guys around him and what we might want to do. And the next case for me, 
I'm going Zamir White. So I'm going to jump around in the ADP a little bit. I'm going to go up to 10.01, mm -hmm. which is where Zamir White's going, right? And again, we like Zamir White coming out. How, that country mofo. There's him and Xavier Leggett should just be, you know, nonstop talking to one another and throw Keon Coleman in there. It'd be a lot of fun to just hear them boys have a podcast <laughs> about, you know, I don't know, ranching or something. I don't riding horses. Fishing, I don't, yeah, I don't what, know. Yeah, any, whatever. Whatever. Some country shit. Uh, and Zamir White's awesome. He finished his season really strong last year. Management uh, and Telesco didn't want to bring back Josh Jacobs. They didn't. They have Zamir White. They brought in Dylan Lobb, which, you know, they've kind of maybe hinted at. Potentially, maybe seeing if he could be their their new Eckler. See what they got in there. Telesco coming over from L.A. And then they, they do have Alexander Madison. I think what has been assumed is that Xavier or uh, Zamir White is going to just come in here and get all of these carries. And now, listen, at 10.01, if you want to draft him there, that's a smash or just an absolute miss. It could be one or the other. There could be some in between and it might be fine. I know nobody likes... Alexander Madison, but he could come in there and really just muddy this whole thing up a little bit here. And then if Lobb's catching a decent amount of passes, which Lobb's a very good pass catcher out of New Hampshire, I just feel like Zamir White could be uh, a little overdrafted at the minute. And just I feel like people are just automatically just giving him the backfield and giving him 20 some touches a game, which, you know, I guess if you're pro Zamir, pro, pro Zamir, which we're, I'm not anti Zamir, I just you're, you're saying, well, there's no way that 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 uh, Madison isn't going to come in here and take any touches or is going to come in here and take any touches away from Zamir or Lob or whomever. And I just, I feel like we might be in for a little bit of a, uh, it's, it's not quite where we where where we thought it was going to be. So it's not the most imposing competition though. You, it's, you gotta admit. it's certainly, it certainly is not, but you know, I think Madison has had some good run in the league and, and I know some, not efficiency recently. stats and everybody hates him much like Najee, uh, Najee Harris, much better player than uh, Madison, but I think Madison can come in here and just bust up some of this uh, Zamir mm -hmm. White, what what could be the potential for him to be the sexy pick at 10-1. Um, so, you know, some things, some people that are going around him, Najee Harris uh, going around uh, that area. I would much rather have Najee Harris. So if I could anywhere near him, I would do that all day long. Let's see some other guys. We got, if I could, if I could add a little bit to Zamir and go to Ramondre Stevenson, I would do that as well. Same thing with Najee. If I could add a little bit to Najee or a little bit to Zamir and go to either one of those two guys, those two guys are guys that are lead backs in this, in, in the NFL. And we've seen them produce. And that's what I want to get here. Obviously, Warren is now a thorn in the side of, of Najee. And that's fine. I think both of those guys can coexist, especially with Arthur Smith there. They have coexisted without Arthur Smith. With Arthur Smith, I think they could really coexist. But now you add... Uh, Ramon, you, I would throw Ramondre Stevenson in that mix. Look, in 2022, he was RB7. He had a bunch of targets per route run metrics and, and receiving metrics that were really, really high. And I'm going to say what the outlier isn't 2022, it's 2023 and that terrible uh, New England Patriots team and the terrible New England Patriots just aura and stink around them. I think you're going to see a whole lot more of the Ramondre you saw in 2022 from the pass catching standpoint. I think he's going to have more than 50% of that backfield. He's going to be more like 60%. Um, it's really Antonio Gibson and him over there and really nobody else. He was getting a little bit of love from Mayo today. Um, and I just, I feel like you're really going to see Stevenson uh, get back to form. So those would be pivots right there. And then again, some of the dynasty daddy trades that I saw uh, a bunch of stuff in that Pearsall area, the 2-3 two, to 2-5 two, in, in startups, or rookie drafts, rather. Sorry, super flex tight and premium. So if I could trade Zamir White for that 2-3, two, 2-4, two, or 2-5, two, done. That's that Keon Coleman, Ricky Pearsall, um, A.D. Mitchell, uh, all, all that. <laughs> yeah, right there he is. Uh, Leggett kind of stuff. If I could do that, I'd do that all day long. Um, some other trades that I saw that I liked uh, and and tight end premium 1.5 Zamir White for Pat Fryermuth again Steelers baby we're buying big Pat I love to swap that out um and then I, th this was a, another one of a of a going up and I think this is a little you might have to add a little extra to this but one to go really far up there Zamir White and Rashad Rasheed Rice for a Drake London now you may have to actually add something to that but if I if I can catch somebody who's got good value on those two guys still right now. And I, and I like Rice. Rice is a buy for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
just using and I like I said I think you'd have to add something to that and you know yeah, I, I that's would a steal. I would that's a, that's a quite the steal but these are these are trades that went real trades that went down in these leagues oh let me get in that um, league right and so you know hey look you could you could say whatever you want about these examples that I'm bringing up I used from a, a, a database with a lot of information and a lot of stuff to pull from but I'm in I'm in a bunch of rookie drafts right now and there's a million trades going on that I go that's a terrible trade I would never do that and that's just kind of what happens at this point in the season. And that's what that's what makes this whole thing go around. Uh, that's why you should be an active trader and actively sending offers all the time, because that's where you're going to get the best edge. Um, so, yes, you would have to add something to white and rice. But if you can if you can trade white rice for Drake London <laughs> and add, you know, some seconds or Jasmine something to rice. it, I, I certainly would. So uh, and then uh, one of the a couple other ones that I saw a third and Zamir white for Swift and a fourth. Now, Swift. Spoiler alert, it's going to be another guy that I'm talking about selling, um, but I'm more comfortable going into the season, I think, with Swift than I am with White. So if I could, you know, minusculely swap those two guys out, I would probably do so. So that's kind of where I'm at with, with Zamir White here. Like going down Zamir White for Kendra Miller, if I could if I could get a, maybe a two on top of that, probably not going to get that, but if I could get a, maybe a two, three swap in there, I, I might do that as well. So that would be kind of going down the scale in our in our ADP. Uh, Kendra Miller down here at, at in the 12th round and uh, Zamir leading off the 10th. So uh, any thoughts on that, Austin, before you get to your next... Uh... Yeah, for Zamir White, man, it's almost like I kind of, I have to see it before I believe it. Mm. And by then, if he does it, I'm already too late. Yeah. Right. So he's kind of one of the, the players you're I'm playing I'm, right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, he's one of the players I'm just cool on. If I miss, I miss. It's fine with me. Like I'm, I'm just going to go take my money and put it elsewhere. You know, so I think that's if it I'm does at. hit, though, I think you're, you got to get you. You can ride it for a season if you're winning. But if you're mm -hmm. if you're a middling team, it's an immediate sell for as much as you can, because I just the, my, my other big problem with Zamir is I don't see it as a long term answer for the Raiders. Right. right? And right. that's I, so, think I should have let off with that. And I'm closing with that. Um, but I do feel like that's 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 a big problem with me for getting behind this ADP is I just feel like it's going to be a hollow existence for him if it is a, if it happens to be where he dominates and and maybe i'm completely wrong he dominates and they're like well we found our guy so we're good it's a uh, final thing i'll say it's really funny man because it kind of gives me like alexander madison vibes all over again from like last yeah. offseason and obviously now they're teammates in las yeah. vegas and it's like you saw how that worked out and yeah sure the situation is not necessarily identical but but uh madison yeah i, I made it awful I, muddy over there though all season long he, yeah he did um i always felt like if madison did hit I wanted to pivot off of him and sell him yeah. the following year if he did, but, but I didn't have any shares. I was actually out on Madison last year. I, I, uh, I just, again, it's just one of, I need to see it before I believe it. Yeah. And, and it's just too late at that point. But Casey, I'll, uh, I'll yeah. pivot. We were, we were Speaking. in on Zamir as a rookie. Uh, just want to throw that out there. You know, I have cheap. some Zamir white when, so. when, he, when he didn't right when, and then when he didn't get the draft capital, then he fell and then it was super easy to obtain. Right. You know, take the so, guys you like cheaper. It's an ebb and a flow. All right, Austin, what do you got for us? All right, Casey, we are selling Joe Mixon because he's 28. All right, you're up next. No. <laughs> Old. <laughs> that's it, man. That's all that, That's all you need to know. You he's know, a lot of people over. go to college can't be for seven good anymore. years. <laughs> no, but for real, man, I want to pivot off of Joe Mixon. Here's here's really what, it, what genuinely worries me, man. I'm pessimistic. It's almost like... Everything seems so good for Joe Mixon. Uh, we're, we're now in Houston, right? We have a high-flying offense. We have C.J. Stroud, three-year, $25 million contract. Everything seems good, right? And I, I just worry that, yes, he is turning 28 soon. Yes, I, I'm always... I have the mindset of I would rather sell a running back a year early than a year late. He might be great this year. Uh, we, you know, there's a few running backs that might be really good this year. And I'm okay with selling them pretty much top dollar now because I promise you, even if they ball out this year, you will not be able to get that same ROI a year from today. But you could say, Austin, I got a chip out of it. And if you did, dude, God bless you. Good for you, man. But that, you know, that's a risk in itself. Like you have to hit, you have to go ring chase. You know, there, there's a time and place for everything. Um, but now that Joe Mixon's in Houston, we have a new team, we have new coaches, a new playbook, new schemes offensive style there's just a lot of different variables that come into play and i think that ultimately what worries me most is there's so many mouths to feed in houston you know stefan diggs is going to cause a scene if he's not getting 150 targets 
Nico Collins just got the bag, man. What was it? A three year, $72 million deal. You know, I'll tell you what, I think Nico's going to be the one. I really feel confident in that. Um, you look, Tank Dell, he outproduced Nico in fantasy production prior to getting hurt in week 12. Dalton Schultz had almost 100 targets. He was a top 10 fantasy tight end. Um, I, I'm just, I mean, dude, there, there's only one ball. There's, there. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, it's uh, sure Joe Mixon's the running back, and I'm, I'm here yapping about the wide receivers. I get it. But I, all things considered, I do think it's it's time to sell Joe Mixon. I think everything sounds so good, and I just, I'm just i pessimistic that it's not going to come to fruition and be exactly what we hope. Uh, and I, I would look to pivot from Joe Mixon to buy someone like, like Blake Corum and some decent change, man. Uh, I want to talk about Blake Corum for a hot sec before I kick it back over to you. Since 2018, there have only been four college running backs to hit these marks. 50-plus rushing touchdowns, 50-plus receptions, and 4,000-plus total yards. We have Brees Hall, Travis Etienne from Clemson, uh, Blake Corum, and Royce Freeman. That's a pretty so, good one. Pr- pretty good list, right? Uh, and pound for pound, I mean, we're talking five foot eight, 205 pounds. I think that Blake Corum is built really well. Dude, he had 27 bench press reps, the same as Joe Alt. Casey, I know we talked about this. He's got those little short arms, so it's not all, you know, not not identical. But I thought that I thought that was outrageous, yeah. man. I thought that I thought that was really impressive. Uh, but I want to talk about some notable information about Blake Corum. Uh, 1.8 touchdowns per game. That is, that is stupid. That's like some video games number right there, right? Against some of the best collegiate defenses, almost two touchdowns a game. He averaged just under 91 yards per game and 18.2 touches. Uh, day two draft capital, you know, I'm happy about that. I, I just think that Blake Corum's stock is rising heavily, and I like Kyron Williams. I want to be clear. I really like Kyron Williams. I just think that there's a path where Blake Corum – produces in the nfl and i think that it's uh i i think it's gonna happen i really do you know yeah i mean i, I we I, i'll buy blake quorum heavily if i have from a Kyron guy um and, and I, you, I yeah i think i think or from a Kyron owner rather um i would invest heavily in 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 the blake quorum sweepstakes i'll go out of my way to go way too early to grab to grab that because i do think that i do think that quorum's a good player and i do think that um you know, if anything happens to Kyron, which we've already seen it that way, that that Quorum is is going to be excellent, and if not, then Quorum will will probably will have a will not probably he will have a role in the offense and take some load off. Um, I don't know what Kyron's contract situation is. I could see them not paying Kyron and just letting him walk whenever that time is. Um, I would I, w- I probably wouldn't go this far. Like if I'm getting, I don't know what the plus would be to go from Mixon to Quorum. I would assume it'd be pretty damn good at this point, right? I was thinking, is a second out of pocket? No, I would think I would think that would be that I'd have that I might even be able to get, maybe even a little bit more than that. It's basically like two twos. Blake Corum is at eleven three in the startup. So and Corum Corum goes usually late. Joe late, is eight six. So late two in a rookie draft. Three so rounds of separation. If two you were, is probably not getting that. If done. you were buying, it would be two twos basically. Hey man, why don't we just like make it one early two? Do you think we could turn that into uh, Keon Coleman, Lad McConkey type of range, realistically, on top of Blake Horm to go? You know, uh, is selling Joe Mixon to get like Lad McConkey and uh, Blake Horm. Do you think that's that realistic? Gonna, like Joe Mixon is an asset to have on your team, but I feel like people don't want to buy him. That just depends. It, it, you know, it's all relative of where you're at and what. But it is a know, good situation. What, what so. your team? It's a great situation. And if I if I'm in a in a team where I'm where I won the championship and I got a really good team, and it's like, hey, I could take some, I could take some uh, risk out of the rookies. You know that uh, that's a that's a guy that I you know Mixon would be my my might be on the other end of your target here because I don't really want Quorum, mm-hmm. and I don't really want uh, you know and not 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 that I wouldn't but like Keon Coleman or something. Um, you know, there's just a lot of risk associated there where I could basically get rid of those and, and just grab Joe Mixon. So I, you know, I think, I think that's, I think that's in the wheelhouse of possibilities for sure. Every league's different, man. Like every league is so different. So it's, uh, we were just making the argument, uh, Jason earlier about how running backs have weight in certain leagues and, but not Joe Mixon. So they certainly, (laughs) they (laughs) certainly, they certainly can. Uh, and, 
I think that's an important thing to talk about. And we try to, as we're going through of, of it's all relative to who, what team you have and where you're at in the spectrum of winning and losing, uh, how for, much for time you got buddy certain franchise, right? So it's just, you got to catch. That's the thing. You got to catch one team going one way and one team going another. I have teams where I'm not interested in making any of my rookie picks because I got a pretty damn good team and fuck all that. Like I'm trying to yeah. go get, I'm trying you to get guys. Collins. I'm trying to get guys. I know I can, that I can start rather than the mystery boxes. And yeah, I might miss out on some elevating of values there, but I'm, I'm and then I got other ones where it's like, I'm not interested. I just want to hit, I'm the, I want to make a lot of these picks or trade around a little bit, gain a little bit more value and, and make a couple of picks. Cause I want those guys to explode in value. Cause I'm at a completely different uh, space. And, and when we really hit that happy medium is when you can kind of do a little bit of both, right? That's, that's really where you want to be at the end of the day, grab, grab a rookie or two, and then trade some of those picks that you've acquired for some guys, you know, that can start. So you're getting the best of both worlds. Um, so I, I think, I think that's a good, a good, a good point to make. And it's, it's a realistic thing because people want to get off of Joe Mixon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at least, you know, half the owners of Joe Mixon probably don't want Joe Mixon anymore. So if you could get, he's only 27 two of those second round players for him, I think, and Blake Corum being one of them. I don't, You're probably I don't, not getting a first, right? Not, it'd be really hard to get a first, like, yeah. you know. You have to give up yeah. something. It's especially off-season trades for right. running backs. Yeah, yeah. Early you in know, the season. You might, you might catch somebody mid-season who's like, Rookie oh, picks I'm, are the most expensive they, they are right now. Like, Well, and 25, veteran, those pretty cheap. Veteran running backs are probably about as cheap as they are right now, you know, and, and veteran old guys are as cheap as they're going to get right now, right? I like it, Austin. All right, who do you who do you got next? Jason? My last, Simmons is old. My, Find it. My last one is uh, I'm going DeAndre Swift. Like I said in that last in the last one, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> off of DeAndre. And you know, I I, I could have I I've I've thought about I had a uh, uh, Pacheco queued up, but I feel like I've done that before. Cook queued up, feel like I've done that before. Rashad White queued up, just feel like I did that before. Uh, so I. I I let those guys hang out. And again, it's, it's never that I dislike any of those guys. It's just where they are. Um, and if I have them on some teams, I'm, I'm you know, I think they're useful players. Um, but where they are in ADP, I, I, I could see a nice little pivot here. Um, and right now we got DeAndre Swift at RB17. He's at 709. Um, so, you know, kind of in that same place that Jaden Reed was. Now, if I could switch Jaden Swift out for Jaden Reed, I would do that. Uh, you know, that's again, you know, we're. This is it's, it's fluid. It's it's kind of moving around here. The thing with DeAndre Swift is that I have seen him do it and I have seen him do it not with a huge role. Right. He doesn't necessarily need this ginormous role to be a good player. One point of touch. Right. And they brought him in and they, they paid him some OK money to, to to be in Chicago. But Chicago still has the same general coaching staff in place. They, they replaced the offensive coordinator. Uh, but they've they've already been in the offseason talking about they're sticking with the hot hand approach. I think Khalil Herbert is a very underrated player and a very good running back. Uh, and then right. you have Roshan Johnson, who I don't think is dead by any means. He's just really cheap right now. Um, Three years, 24 million for the Swift. Uh, and, I, and I like I think DeAndre Swift is a good player. He's a good pass catcher. Uh, but, you know, you got to kind of play him in space. Uh, I, I don't I don't know that he's the best between the tackles grinder. Uh, that, that you could possibly have. I think Khalil Herbert is better in that regard. But I, I you know, to me, this is, hey, can I pivot off of him? And, and here's some Dynasty Daddy database trade research. Swift for Rashi Rice. That's a no brainer all day long. Saw that one pop up as a one for one. That was a trade that was made today. You got to get Rashi. Um, let me get Rashi. Yeah. Um, if mm -hmm. I can buy the dip on Rashi, I said he was a buy earlier. And one example, I used him as a sell if you get good value. But I want to buy the Rashis all day long. This one I thought was good because it falls right in with our ADP. DeAndre Swift at 709, and we have Deshaun Watson at 704. Uh, and this was two quarterback. It was, Desha it was Swift and a second for Deshaun Watson and a third. I would make that trade all day long. Like, let me get Deshaun Watson on my team. I know nobody likes Deshaun Watson, so that's a good time to buy Deshaun Watson. If anybody's high on Swift, let me sell Swift. And, and let me grab that other quarterback. I think I don't know how much that Swift can go up in value. And that's not the only game we need to be playing here. But like, I don't know how much Swift can go up in value. But I know Deshaun Watson, if he comes back playing well, he can go up in value. Regardless of what you think about him as a human being is irrelevant for fantasy. Um, the fact that my client's been ridden more than Seattle <laughs> slew is irrelevant. Is irrelevant. Um, so I, I really like that one. I thought that was a good one. Uh, I thought there's no way you could get 
Watson was swift. That is perfect, though, because but, I bet you can. But right here, you shouldn't it, be able it, to. But in our ADP, it's also but really right there, close. So right. it's, it's not it's not like mm-hmm. out of the realm of possibilities. Go and, Tigers! And, and sometimes you know, it doesn't make sense, but it is what it is. I saw this one. It is what it is. Clemson, Swift, and Corley for Zay Flowers. Now I don't know that you're doing that, so that's basically you know all day Swift and Corley. If you could do that for sure, but if I could add. Uh, you Some know, an extra, flowers. An, an extra two and a three to that to go get Zay Flowers. I would do that. One. Um, get the two back. I, I would try to keep something. Yeah, maybe a one two swap there. But I love Zay Flowers. I'd much rather have Zay Flowers than Swift. Obviously, yeah. the ADP reflects a big difference in there. We got Zay Flowers um, coming in here at 505. So that's a two round difference there. I would trade, you know, uh, Swift and Corley and, and, Two Swift twos crack. or something, if I and see if I could get Zay Flowers or something was down on. That's just one that I saw that stood out to me, so I wrote it down. I don't know that how realistic it was. This one seems a little more realistic. Swift and a twenty-five two for Corley and Jonathan Brooks. Jonathan Brooks, uh, you know, pretty yeah. pretty close in ADP here. I just want to watch reset that. I want to reset the clock. Re- I like he, he right now. He is me and Big Re-roll. Co just talked about this. He is every rookie draft that we're doing. He Brooks. is gaining more and more steam. People are really into him. The value seems insulated. He's coming off an injury. Um, I would love to do that. And whether whatever you think about Malachi Corley doesn't really matter. Um, but I'd, I'd be fine with making uh, kind of a trade like that. And and you can see you have Jonathan Brooks coming in at six twelve, and you have Swift coming in at uh, seven oh nine. So I would gladly make a swap like that. Basically, Corley is a third right now going in rookie draft. So you know you're over. You're adding a little something to get to Brooks, but you're getting a little something back with. You're basically getting the three back with Corley. You can make that whatever you want it to be. So Brooks and a third for Swift and a two. I'd I'd do that. And then this was uh, I got two more here. Swift for Pittman. I think that that you got to add something. That, that was way too easy. Yeah. Um. But I would if I could add something to Swift. If I could add a first to Swift to get Pittman. I'd probably do that. Um, and then this was Swift, the two Swift, Swift and a 25-2 for T. Higgins. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I could if I could add um, if I could add more value to that pick, like I, I would Jeez, give you. Let me think. Um, sure. Two twos, two and a three might be even down to do a one two swap. I still think T. Higgins is a very good player. We've talked about him a lot. But but the ADP. Yeah. Is a lot closer um, on on that one than than some of these other ones. T Higgins at six two, Swift at seven oh nine. So a little little closer in margin there uh, from him to Pittman, where I said I'd give the one. So maybe you could give Swift a two and a two to get T. Send that out, see what happens. Maybe not. Maybe not in every league. Maybe not in any league. But it happened in one league. That was on Dynasty Daddy. Uh, Swift, Roman Wilson, and Bub Means making an appearance on two shows back to back here. Uh, for George Pickens. Uh, so Pickens, uh, also pretty close in ADP here, 6'6 six, six, uh, and 7'6. Six, six, so a round apart, adding in Roman Wilson and Bub Memes. I don't think that that's getting it done, per se, uh, but I would I would gladly even add a two to that to get Pickens for me there. So. Pickens. On the, on the way up. We Pickens. Dynasty Breakouts video, Pickens on that bitch. Pickens is... Uh, you know, getting a whole lot less flack this season. A lot less people with Pickens' name in their mouth all the time. Haven't heard anything negative. Yeah. You know? Yeah, not a whole lot of shit talking. So I would love to upgrade Swift, Roman Wilson, Bub Memes, and I'd even throw a two in there to try to get George Pickens. The old Big Co special, throw a bunch of trash at him. Uh, throw, two's throw, not trash. Uh, well, I'm keep, just saying. Then keep, you throw, I got to keep Bub. Then you throw Swift and the two in there, and you're like, ooh, Roman Wilson's pretty good. And then, I don't, you know, Bub Memes, you could su- substitute something else in there for, for him. Good name. I don't even know uh, who that is. Let me get that guy. Out of pit. Uh, went to the Saints. Six one two hundred maybe uh, the wire reference. Ran, like ran, where, where does Bub come from? Or is, he can't be on his birth certificate. Ran a four four three, I believe. So good. How did just good score? down the field player there. So any thoughts here, Austin? You got one more for us, or are you out of them? Yeah, I got one more. All right. I uh, final player that, that I want to pivot, and I mentioned this earlier, man. I like to pivot off of running backs a year early rather than a year later or a year too late. It's Alvin Kamara, man, and we were yapping about him before in the previous video. I like Alvin Kamara so much this upcoming season. He was incredible last year. I don't I don't think enough people realize how good Kamara was last season. And yes, I think he's going to be very good this year. I'm still looking to pivot off of him, man. I'm I'm looking I was I was running through ADP. I saw Calvin Ridley a tier below and I believe that Calvin Ridley plus change for Alvin Kamara is something that I would love to do, right? And and now the only 
real issue that I have with Kamara, man, it's it it really comes down to age, right? Like we haven't even seen the 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 drop off in production or efficiency. Uh, I'm just looking to gain youth, get younger. Kamara is RB25 according to Fantasy Pros. I saw Calvin Ridley at wide receiver 44, right? Look, I'm not even necessarily infatuated with Calvin Ridley, but wide receiver 44 for Calvin Ridley, that that felt late to me, man. He's 38 in my rankings, and I want to rip off a few stats about Calvin Ridley. 14th in targets. We're talking about the wide receiver 44 in Dynasty. 14th in targets last year, 8th in deep targets, third in red zone targets okay people were upset with calvin ridley for being inconsistent Mm -hmm. he didn't play football for two years okay i mean two two straight seasons you take two years off anything man you come right back into it it's difficult to to just pick up where you left off and uh to basically come back after a two-year hiatus and put up 75 plus receptions a thousand plus yards and eight plus touchdowns i think that's wildly impressive i don't think that's talked about enough i mean thirds third in routes run last year so he was on the field an absurd amount 16th in total route wins so he was clearly winning pretty frequent man 11th in touchdowns 18th in fantasy points i mean he put up 230 fantasy points takes two years off bad uh, broad not, jump though <laughs> dude yeah right i just i don't know man I, I don't really understand the calvin ridley fade um this is also the first time Calvin Ridley played 17 games in a year, right? I, I, I'm excited for Hampshire Calvin Ridley's future. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, it's been an issue in the past, man. Uh, but but Calvin Ridley's future, I think it's exciting. I, I love that he got the bag. I like I like what Tennessee's doing, man. I like how they're building the trenches. Casey, I know you're a big fan of of, of that as well, man. You know, Peter Skronsky. Uh, I, I think that they've done a very good job. And on top of that, I, I just believe that Calvin Ridley can continue to play at a high level. All things considered, it was a very promising season for Calvin Ridley. And uh, I just I think that this is a very realistic deal. Uh, Kamara's going to be 29, man. I, I just I think, all again, all things considered, I think this is a solid a solid dub. When we look back a year from now, I, I think Cal, I think Alvin Kamara is simply going to be cheaper, right? It, it, do you, would you would you push back on that, Casey? So how you can't so how you can't go up. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's again, you know, you, you let it off with we talked we were pumping them up on the other one. It's it's again goes back to the conversation of depending on where you're at and what you're doing. And, right. And yeah, if I you, just want to ship. I'm keeping that man. You want to be out a year. You know, that's the game is to be out a year early then 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 be stuck holding i don't want to be and, out a year on my championship either early sure right but you right. know you're trading in for you know you're going old for old here and calvin yeah. ridley has two less years on him and is a round or so cheaper I trade. um than than alvin kamara is and i you know i don't i don't hate the situation that calvin ridley's going into uh, and I, I do like you said i like like what tennessee's uh building down there and just to see if will levis is the guy the only bugaboo there is if levis is not the guy then well, then we have a, putting a lot on levis and there's a lot of options there uh, i forgot so. to ma- mention jc latham right that was the other him yeah. and peter skronsky mm. love that dude mm. love that and just for the record uh, the bag bag just got added to the board if, if i hear bag <laughs> you gotta drink <laughs> hey that's on me man but that's no I, I don't i don't i don't dislike he it. said it at least 18 times in the last two shows too, um, so. I just, it's not just I, you. That did not. I might have said it twice. Where's off the rip in it? Oh well, I retired that one. Oh no. Now it's all. About, I've been saying it at work all over the. Place. Now it's all just about like, sound bites. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to get an off the rip uh, sound bite, and if you don't like them, I got a lot of problems with you people. That's right. No man, I mean you pivot into the to the old from the old running back to the old wide receiver. You would hope that the old wide receiver. I don't think either one of them really gain a ton of value. It's just a matter of pivoting, maybe getting paid a little bit to pivot off of yeah. them um, and, and go right, down right. a little bit. So I, you know, I don't I don't dislike that. Yeah, that's exactly how I view it, man. Just just getting I don't know a second, just getting some additional piece on top of it, and you know, really doing your due diligence, your homework, and hopefully you can hit on it, man. Maybe it's like a Jalen Polk and. Hey, I love Jalen Polk. I could sit here and talk to you for an hour about Jalen Polk. So yeah, well, I do, I do, you know, I do think that Calvin Ridley is probably a little slept on. The only, the only thing we got to worry about is can Levis facilitate um, him and Nuke. Uh, but mm-hmm. but I, I think Calvin Ridley was misplayed in his role last year. Still saw a good volume, but uh, needs to be used slightly different. Uh, how than than how um, the Jacksonville Jaguars were were using him. So. 
Um, I, I think he could be in for for a big season here. I think I think the uh, the Callahans uh, have uh, and their auto company auto parts have uh, brake pads have have come in and and they, they probably have a pretty solid plan for Calvin Ridley and and Nuke, who also is probably you know not really showing any signs of sl- slowing down either. So I don't mind taking a shot on on any of those Tennessee parts and pieces. Alvin Kamara, the, the wheels could could fall off. Uh, they they tend to fall off a little quicker on on running backs than right. wide receivers. But those so. receiving running backs, though. Yeah, well, that's that's the Matt difference. Forte had his best season at age twenty eight. Well, you know what I'm saying. Case closed. Case Keenum. All right, let's get the let's get the FF out of here. Ooh. It's been a long one. Yeah, grueling. Wait, wait. Too Sorry, much, guys. guys. Um, Austin, make sure you go check him out at Austin Abbott. Two B's, two T's, two F's. Got to go check out Fade Consensus wherever you can, wherever you can get podcasts. Um, my guys out there putting out good information into the world on the Twitters and on, in the airwaves. Of course, you can check them out here at the FF Dynasty. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Go ahead and hit uh, this up in the discords. we got a free one. we got a $5 holler. Uh, we, we've partnered up with uh, Dynasty Daddy. We're working working through some stuff. We're about to have a lot of good stuff with them, and we got another little partnership that, that we'll announce here soon. That'll be fun. And we're working on the third one. So a lot of, lot of moving parts here. Um, a tripod. A lot, a lot of stuff going on. We got Big Co back at the bring on a third? We got Big D. We got Austin. Must be an out-of-town thing. Build, building, the, building the squad here. Um, we hope we enjoy, you enjoy it. It's, of course, always for your pleasure. 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 All right. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>